And joining me now is Tabitha Compton from Compton Family Wines. And it's good to have you here. Thank you. Good to see you. Well, what do you have in front of you? So I, I know, so here, you guys, here's what's going to come up tonight. Um, there's a big party this weekend for the 4th of July weekend um, for wine club members. It's not too late for you to become a wine club member so you can go. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Tabitha is very, um, what is that? Very accommodating for wine club members. And, um, and so tell, first, well, let's, let's talk about that club. Um, so how many people do you have in your wine club? Um, we have over 500 wine club members, a lot of locals. They are huge supporters of us. Most of our customers have been with us for, oh gosh, even since we started in 2000 and, well, officially in three in 2003, I've got some long customers and it's fun because I know so much about all of them and their families and they're having kids and growing up. So it's a good connection. Great group of people. I think what people don't understand, because we were part of our wine club for about three years, and all the benefits that come with, I mean, we got to go to fun, you know, so we'll tell people what's happening this weekend. So the, over the fourth. Yeah. Well, our wine club's quarterly. So January, April, July, and October, we have a wine club party each quarter. So this is the one weekend that we have a party. So we have different stations of wine tasting and food pairing. And it's just fun because people can finally, we didn't do it for a couple of years. Um, but now people can come and mingle and have their space or be in other people's space and enjoy all the time they get to spend with each other, but also enjoy some wine and food. So what time is it? When is it? Kind of things like that for folks. Noon to five Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And so it is for members. It's free to become a wine club member and it's 20% off any bottles and 25% off cases. I have a lot of people when they come and taste, they're like, well, why wouldn't I do it? And I'm like, I'm not sure why you wouldn't do it because it is a good deal, especially with our prices. I haven't seen too many other wine clubs that kind of beat uh, what we have with our offers and specials. So, Because don't a lot of them charge? I, yeah. To be in a well, wine club? Well, some. I mean, it, all, it all depends. Yeah. I, I shouldn't say because it's all over the board. I mean, we, we charge. We automatically run your credit card each quarter. I tell people that's the catch. The catches that we run here and that we choose the wines. But outside of that, we have a red wine club and a mixed wine club. So you kind of get honed in on which direction you like for your wines. So how did you guys get started doing this? Because you were, I mean, this is like now you're experts, but when you started this, um, you guys didn't, you, you know, you kind of popped in. Yeah, we were amateur winemakers for a long time. And then we started the winery in 2003. I was a horse trainer and Matt moved out from New Jersey and, and worked for Oregon State as a research vineyard. So that's kind of how he got started. And he got the job because he knew how to drive a tractor and not because he knew how to farm grapes. So we just started the winery. We, didn't, we were young. We started it in our 20s and we kept wanting, you know, we, we were, wanted to be entrepreneurs. We didn't want to work for somebody else. We had worked for somebody else. But even out of high school, I started my own business right out of high school. So we're both kind of forward thinking and wanting to, you know, be involved with the community and have a business that supports the community. And yeah, so that's how we started. It's just jumping in and knowing that we could only pull off what we could afford to do. So we started at 400 cases and now we're about a 10,000 case winery. So it isn't huge, but. So what when you when you define forward thinking, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't know. I just didn't want to be stuck working for somebody else. I like that there's a lot of diversity in what we do. And I, I have, we have so many different things that we handle that I just love that. And even when I, I don't know, I think if you're pretty ambitious to want to have your own business. So I guess that's why I would say forward thinking. And you've kind of taught your kids to do the same thing, haven't you? I mean, where take, I mean, you and Matt both are kind of like, take charge of your own life. Um, you know, do things the way you feel it's the best way to do. Why is that so important to you? Instilling values. Um, you know, I actually, now that we have the farm and raising the kids on the farm, I find it pretty interesting. The fact of, you know, the animals get out and then we're all looking like, oh God, who did it? But it's like, okay, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of in life. We've got a problem. <laughs> Let's fix it. You know? So yes, the boys are all pretty involved. Even when we started the winery, they used to wave at the customers, open the doors and, 
and and everybody actually for the wine club weekends people love seeing my kids here helping just with food and saying hi and being social so it definitely is family my mom's here helping sometimes Matt's here but most of the time we're all farming as well as he's making wine during the week so he's not around on the weekend so much but yeah it's all hands on deck for us so and and when Tim came up there Tim is a guy who works with us and he came up and he just loved you guys and he said you and your cohorts that work together are really like he could say he had so much fun talking to you guys because you're like a family that's true i mean i my staff is amazing i couldn't do what i any of this with what i do without them i have some really great people right now but to, typically it was just a, it really is just a handful of us but we all know a little bit of everything and help out doing all of it and yeah i like i like to make sure my employees feel welcomed and it's that they're a part of the business too and it's important and they're valued and especially this day and age like <laughs> i want everybody to feel like it's inclusive and they have a part of it okay so hold that thought i gotta run a couple breaks here because you guys our show is also sponsored by chris dental family dentistry and also albert taylor uh endless possibilities tabitha you would love them it's a group of, of, of they have group homes in our community um, and they take folks with different abilities and um, make them have the most amazing lives because uh, they get to choose their life. So they're also one of our sponsors. And Rosa Realty um, will be live with them in Harrisburg for the 4th of July parade. What is Philomath? Because you guys are located in Philomath. What, is, what does Philomath do for the 4th of July? Well, we have a big rodeo grounds and the rodeo is in a couple of days. But 4th of July, we don't do a... I think the fire the fireworks is for the with the rodeo, but I don't think there's a lot for Fourth of July. We have uh, we'll have a big parade with the Philomath Frolic and Rodeo, but last night there was just a fire at the rodeo grounds that took out some of the bleachers. So I'm hoping the show will still go on, but I'm not sure if it will. It's all just happened last night, so we'll see. But that's a big oh thing God. for our town. Yeah. Okay, so I want you to hold on for a second. When we come back, I'm going to give you a thought. So I want you to talk to me about regenerative uh, farming. Okay. Okay. I didn't know what this was. And actually, after you said it, I had to go look it up. <laughs> so hold on just a second. That, I mean, this is, the COVID's never going anywhere. And so we, you know, it's funny how we got out of our mask mandate at actually a time that our COVID was really high. This last February, they mentioned that like they took away the mask. So I think it, would be, it was more political. But once Kate Brown's out of office, or you know the legislation's out of office because they're, they're, you know she can't be the next governor, I think we're going to end up having a short stay of, of mask. It'll be surprise me if we won't. If we don't, I mean you're starting to see that kind of happen around the country again. Um, so I just I worry I worry there's going to be some kind of restriction, and hopefully this fall the kids don't have to wear a mask again. But with the with the politi with the elections coming up, it probably won't happen until after the elections. Make what is very normal more normal for the general population. Yeah, I think that's a great way to describe it. You know, Rick, is it the the people that we work with are exactly that. They're people. They they're you know we 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 talk a lot about the fact that they're not disabled. They're differently able. To, uh, we have people that, that are artists. We have people that make music. You know, we have people that have all kinds of other things that are really, when you when you spend the time to get to know them, they're warm, funny, wonderful people who they just want to do what the rest of us want to do, which is fu fully embrace and live their lives and be part of the larger community and, you know, and, and be out there and, and have a chance to engage. and. and and, and interact with folks and tell their stories and hear people's stories. So how many homes do you guys have? We have 16 group homes right now. Uh, and then we have probably about another 30 or 40 people that we support. Hey everyone, I'm Kelly and I'm Tabitha. And we're from Western Title and we are at Los Dos Amigos this week and I got the lunch special. I got fajitas. We're filling in for Derek and let's talk about escrow. 
So what is escrow? Escrow, we are a neutral third party and we are the hub that really handles all of your money, all of it follows the terms of your real estate agreement, your lender instructions. So when you go and you are in contract with either a buyer or a seller, the earnest money is deposited with your escrow team and you sign your loan documents, your seller documents, all with escrow. Our job is to really protect the buyers to make sure that the property is free and clear of all liens and ensure that they don't have anything to worry about after the sale of their home. So that was a really quick rundown of what escrow is and our job and responsibilities to use buyers and sellers. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at Western Title and I'd be happy to go over any of that information. And make sure you stay tuned for next week to see Derek and what he has coming next. You know what I love, Tabitha, about um, all of our clients is like there's Derek. So Derek's our client and he's paying for advertising for some of the other people he does work with. And I love, you know, I think, but that's kind of like regenerative farming, really. <laughs> everybody kind of works together. You you have to, you know, they, I, I think the world, the, the days of proprietorship where you're, you know, this is my territory, this is mine. You can't be like that anymore. You have to be working with different people like that. I agree. My my sons always make fun of me, and I feel like we're a little bit similar after meeting you. Is they're like, do you know that person? I'm like, no, but why wouldn't I talk to him? Why wouldn't I want to learn more about people? I love talking to people and connecting with people. That's so fun. But that's, I, yeah, that's that's what Kathy and I were talking about this today because we're you know we're in a new place and we don't. And, and so I wrote a blog about this. I so I sent it to you, and it's like how I don't know anybody. In the last three days, it's like God's put three different people in my life. Um, you know, people like talking to me going, Hey, hi, Rick Dancer. I, I'm from Eugene. I used to live in Eugene. Now I'm here in Helena, Montana. And I'm going, okay, okay. I'm not complaining anymore. You know, um, that networking is really what makes things work. So tell me about regenerative farming. I have to, my lips, when I say it, regenerative farming, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what does that mean for people that don't know? Well, it's the old old new way of farming. So it's how we used to farm, working the land, letting cattle graze, fertilize naturally, uh, low input. Yeah, working it from under the ground all the way up to the sky. So rather than uh, killing animals that are getting involved in your livestock or whatever, we have livestock guardian dogs to protect our livestock and our sheep are out in the vineyard, naturally fertilizing the ground. Um, we've been doing this, we just started, we bought one of our properties that we've leased for over 20 years, about a year and a half ago. So we are working slowly to farm this way, but all, all winter, the sheep were out in the vineyard, naturally fertilizing with our livestock guardian dogs. I have some cooney cooney pigs that have short noses and short snouts that are kind of my pet pigs that they run around the vineyard all year long fertilizing. And they so so it's and they're also grazers. So we're working having the animals work so we don't have to be out with as many vehicles and using gas and so the inputs on the soil also by you know running the tractors through there. So we're trying to use less inputs to get more growth. Is that a lot harder or when you're when you're switching over? Yeah, well, it's more labor intensive. If if we are trying to get out there, we are either weed whacking or um, we instead of tilling up the ground every uh, we used to till every other row. We are using a no-till drill, so this is actually rotates and then drills the seeds into the ground. So it's it's a more um, it's easier on the soil rather than ripping it up because then when you rip it up, you ruin your microbiomes in the soil by ripping up the ground. So, you know, it's kind of funny is the, the, that we've become so technical and yet what farmers used to do was highly technical, but they didn't have all the, the resources that we do to understand what they were doing. They just know it worked. Yeah. And I was listening to a great podcast recently about regenerative farming and the farmers were talking about that, how they have gone back to finding older tractors that they can fix because now all these new fancy tractors with the computers and such, and we can't get the parts to repair them. So they're wanting to go back to the old so they can just repair things on their own and be able to just keep on going and not be slowed down by, you know, what we can't get out there and our I shortages. Did, Kathy and I did a story in um, Halfway, Oregon on a <laughs> farmer, and he does, he has not one piece of machinery on his farm. 
So everything, he's got plows. You know the old hay, the, the way they took the horses and they had big rakes and they'd throw the hay up on the stack? He's yeah, still doing that. that's awesome. And his whole place is just like a graveyard of old, old farm equipment. And he takes it and restores it because he really does use it. And so oh, he, has, neat. he has nothing. I mean, he doesn't even mow with a, a lawnmower. And it was oh, so cool. fascinating. And, and, and I said to him, so... Um, you know, our, well, the funny thing he said to me is he goes, he's from Minnesota. And he goes, uh -huh. you, know, you got more, you got more technology in that phone than I have on my whole farm. And, <laughs> and I thought that was the funniest thing. And then he said, he said to me, um, I said, so are you an organic farmer? He goes, no. And I said, well, you don't use any pesticides or anything. He goes, no, but to be organic, you have to pay $5,000 and get a license that says you're organic. He says, instead, I just grow good food for my neighbors and I don't put the organic label on it, but I don't use any pesticides out here. And I thought, you know, that is like the real deal kind of dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like, I don't have a sign that says organic. It's like, I just am. And I thought, yeah. I thought that was really interesting. So is it, is this quite a move? I mean, you're the first person. I mean, he is probably regenerative. I didn't know that. He didn't call it that. Mm -hmm, right. Is this kind of the new move? in the world with you know in the i i really hope it is because if it takes off then if we can all move into this <laughs> new old way then we could save our lands i mean the grassland that we're farming on is so deteriorated and so stripped out i wish we would because then our food would be more nutritious as well but yeah there there are some farmers that are coming together and doing it. Uh, we're so new to doing it. I, I, I could be in doing a better job marketing it, but right now I'm just busy farming. <laughs> yeah. You're trying to get, getting it in order. So <laughs> you guys are doing a special with us. Um, so if people put in the, the, what's the, what's tell them what the website It's is. a special website. It's a piece of our website just for you and your clientele. Compton wines with an F dot com forward slash Rick. There's a whole page. And there's specials on there. If you uh, enter your email, you'll get a promo code that gives you $15 off two or more bottles uh, when you shop online. And you can pick them up, too. You don't have to have them shipped if you'd like to save them the money there. So that's um, only for people who are watching Rick Dancer uh, on here or Instagram or wherever you guys are watching. And just go in there and uh, you can sign up and you'll get, uh, what is it, 20% or $20, $15? $15 off. Two, two bottles. bottles or more. And then if you want to be in the wine club, it's free. You it know? is. And there's, there's a whole other section and information on our website about the wine club. And I love it. I, I just have so much fun with our wine club members. It's a yeah. gift to be able to connect with them and learn and catch up with them. So what's the big wine this summer? Rosés are big in the summer, aren't they? Rosé, yeah. I mean, but I, I think Pinot Noir and chocolate is a food group to me. So I, I would drink that all year round. <laughs> is that the one that you think is so effing good? Oh no, that's the Pinot Blanc, the Pinot Blanc. <laughs> of the she, white. I do drink a lot of Pinot Blanc in the summertime. She she loves her Pinot Blanc, but I do. It's I just I I honestly, when people come into our tasting room, they're like, "What descriptors do you have?" And I'm like, "I don't like telling people what they taste. It's just you like it or you like it or you don't. You don't." And I'm not offended if you don't, but I feel like telling people what they taste is just we're all so different. Just so yeah. you're not even close to being a wine snob, are you? No, my most snobbiness is my wine glasses. I really like a good wine glass, and most of the time. So does it? Well, really I guess if you ask my good friends when I'm drinking with them, they might have another thing to say. But yeah, there's cap <laughs> right out of the bottle. Yeah. Well, I, I do. I might be a little picky to them because they'll try to give me some wine. I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> does bottle, the bottles matter? I mean, the, um, the glass, the wine glasses. I think it does. Yeah. Good wine glasses makes all the difference. So you're not one of those people that I remember going to a wine tasting one time and they say, this tastes like pear and oak and something else. And then it's like, it did. But I wondered if they hadn't said anything. Yeah. About it. I think it makes a difference. I feel like everybody's going to make up their mind either way. I think we may have lost her. Let's try bringing this back here. Oh, we lost her. Well, 
here's the deal. So if you guys want to save $15 on two bottles of wine or more, uh, just go to the Compton Vineyard site, the Compton family, uh, wine site. Um, I'm going to put the, the, the thing on here so you guys will know how to do it. And then you sign up there uh, to get their newsletter and you will also uh, be eligible for that. And you can sign up for the wine club at the same time. So Tabitha, thank you for uh, doing that for me today and being with us and sharing your wine and expertise. And again, you guys, um, the wine club party is this weekend. So if you sign up, oh, there she is. There, you're back. I am. <laughs> you know, the, the miracles of technology. So I was just telling people about the club again and to sign up with you and thanking you for doing this for me today. Um, Tabitha is, uh, this is my birthday show. And so it, I can think of no other better way to celebrate my birthday than with a wine, oh. you know, and, and you guys. Birthday. So thank you so much. Yeah. When you get over 60, you really don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> you know? you know? I think like, you're over 21. <laughs> yeah. What does it matter? You get to an age where you go, people go, how old are you? And I say 63 and they go, oh, really? <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> oh, okay. that was nice because you don't think I look that old. But but the other yeah. side of that is you think I'm like Moses. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have my staff and I say, let my people go. <laughs> hey, Tabitha, thank you again. We appreciate your sponsorship. We appreciate your wine. And um, I am going to be, once we get our Airbnb open, I'm going to be ordering a case of wine so I can give it away to people. Um, an Oregon treasure that they'll get in Montana. Nice. All right. I'll happy talk to you later. Happy birthday. Hey, thank thanks. you. See you later, Tabitha. All right. And that's the show for tonight. Uh, take this shared on your page, for, especially if you have wine friends, <laughs> not whining friends. <laughs> They're not going to care. They might shut them up a little bit, but wine friends. If you have friends who are really into wine, here's a new place to try just up the road in Philomath from you guys. And it's a really cool little winery. And it's right, easy access. And then you can enjoy Philomath at the same time while you're there or head into Corvallis and have some food too. There's Plus, there's a lot of really cool little restaurants out there in Philomath. Um, and Tabitha will tell you all about them. I'm Rick Dancer. Thanks for being with us tonight. And I will see you tomorrow night. And tomorrow night, we're going to be telling you all about the biggest 4th of July celebration that is so old fashioned. It's rural Oregon. It's Harrisburg, Oregon. Derek Rosa Realty Group is going to be one of our sponsors. And Matt, uh, and Derek grew up there. And Matt McCarl lives there. He's with New Leaf Hyperbaric and Wellness Center. So he's also going to be doing his show from the, um, and it, the, the parade is obviously on the 4th of July, but we're going to be promoting it, talking to people that are involved in it. And if you want pancakes and an old fashioned 4th of July, uh, Harrisburg, Oregon is your place. All right, we'll see.